Google is the most popular search engine in the world, but did you know Google has other tools built in to it? In this video, I'm going to share with you 10 useful Google tools that you may not have heard of before. Let's jump in. Surprising tool number one is Google Patents. You may never have heard of this before. Google Patents is sitting right here on patents.google.com. When I click on it, and I get a screen very similar to the Google search window, but it, you can see here it says Google Patents. I'm gonna type in something like hockey stick, for example. And when I click search, I actually get back patents now with illustrations. When I click on it, I can see now, I get these illustrations over on the right-hand side. These can look really cool if you're doing fine art prints, print on demand, these are all public domain. And you can also download the PDF right here as well. Here's another one for tennis racket. You can see here racket for narrow indoor spaces. Here's a bird for playing badminton. There's all sorts of cool things and you can search this, which is really cool. It gives you the patent numbers and it's really fun to look through and find cool patents. Surprising tool number two is Google Drive or G Drive as it's sometimes known. So here I am on the Google homepage. This is google.ca or google.com, whatever. And I've got my Crafty Stacks account. Now I can click on these little nine buttons over here. These are called Google Apps. And I can see here, I can go to my account, I can search, but there is a G Drive right here. So when I click on G Drive, it takes me to this screen and this is 15 gigabytes of free storage. So I can have files that I can upload in here and I can use this now like a cloud service. So if I'm overseas or if I'm sharing with a friend, so it's 15 gigabytes for free that you can use simply by setting up a free Google account. Surprising app number three is Google Shopping. I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna type into the chat window, funny cat t-shirts. And what I get back are all images, shopping videos. Well, I'm gonna click on shopping now at the top and that's actually gonna show me now what Google thinks is the best options for me to buy funny cat t-shirts. What I like about this is if you're working in print on demand, this is what a customer may see. So you can see there's Amazon, eBay, Etsy, AliExpress, Walmart.ca, TeePublic, and the list goes on and on. So if you're wondering if it's worth it to list on sites like Redbubble or TeePublic, the answer is yes, depending on the search term. Surprising app number four is Google Trends. And I do use this quite a bit when I'm searching for things that may be good to sell on print on demand. So I'm on trends.google.com slash trends slash and I can see now I'm in Canada so it knows where I am but I could type into the explore button here I could type in for example the band kiss and I can see here the interest over time and I can see the past day the past five years and we can see there's different trending results now I was thinking of the band kiss but we can see here there's related topics there's eyelashes there's the Hershey company there's different films you can try it with different search terms as well. So for example, here is the 2024 election and the interest over time obviously is not that great, but as we get closer to the election, we can see here it's spiking. So if you're a United States citizen, this may be of great interest to you. Google Trends can be really useful, especially if something's just happened recently. You can see specific keywords that people are searching for and that can help you create a shirt or a print on demand item that people are actually searching for through keywords. Surprising Google app number five, is Google Books. You can actually read free books right on Google. So I'm gonna show you how this works. The website is books.google.ca or .com, depending on what country you're in. And I'm gonna type in an old book here. I'm gonna type in Tale of Two Cities. And what I can see here is there's a Tale of Two Cities comes up and it's illustrated, volume one, recalled to life. There's a bunch of different books here that come up. And I'm gonna search on this one here, this, for, this uh, one that says Charles Dickens, 1863. Chances are if it's an old book like this, it'll be in the public domain. So I'm gonna click on it and we can see right here, the book actually pops up. So I'm gonna close this out real quick and we can see here, I can read this free of charge. I can download the PDF. I can also search inside or I can add to my library and that's attached to your Google account. I'm gonna click read free of charge and we can see now the book pops up. I can view the front cover. I can view the different pages. I can also view the entire book just with thumbnails. They are scans, so they're not always perfect. You can see here, here's a page that's kind of gone off the rails, but for the most part, it's a free book. So that's pretty neat if you're hard up for something to read or if you're looking for public domain items, this can be a really nice, easy tool because it actually is tied into Google search. Surprising app number six is Google Video. If I type in under Google Hurricane, 
right here at the top, there's a videos button. I'm going to click on the videos and we can see here there's people singing songs about hurricanes. There's actual hurricanes. There's rock videos. These are all the different videos that Google thinks you're going to like. Now, most of them will be YouTube because YouTube is owned by Google. But you can see here, this is an Ocean Today government hurricane storage serum. If I click on this, we get to a website that shows different hurricanes. So that's pretty interesting. You can basically type into the search window and then you can see if there's related videos in your world that tie into that search term. Surprising app number seven is Google Mail. Now most people know about Google Mail. On the main page is a little Gmail button there but if it doesn't come up for some reason you can also click the little Google Apps. That's nine horizontal and vertical dots like a little tic-tac-toe and you can also see that mail is sitting in here. There's Gmail it's called. When you do that, it's going to ask you to sign up or sign in. When you've got an account already, then you can check your Gmail. And it's just like free email. So you can have free email. It's very secure. It'll have a gmail.com suffix. So it'd be like, you know, zenwatercooler34 at gmail.com. And that would be an email that you can use for ease of use all over the world. Surprising app number eight is Google Image. Now most of us know about Google Image, but I'm going to show you how this works. There's a really cool feature here called Lens. So on the main website here, I'm on google.ca, there's a little button right here, search by image, and I'm going to click on it. And then it says here I can upload a file. So I'm going to upload a picture that I took myself. So here's a picture of an action figure that I took. I'm going to upload it. So on the left is the picture that I myself took with my own camera. And on the right, you can see Google is trying to match it up to things that exist on the internet. So if you take a picture of something and you're not sure what it is, you can actually Google image search it and it will try to bring up search results so you can figure out what type of flower or what type of animal or what type of action figure you've got. Surprising app number nine is Google Maps. Uh, I love using Google Maps. You just click over here on the right hand side. There's the nine little bars and then you click on Maps, which is right here. And now I've typed in Rome in Google Maps and you can see you can go right in and you can look, for example, here's the Colosseum. I'm going to click on it and we'll see now it gives us pictures. There's over 2.4 million photos of the Colosseum. So this is great if you're going to be doing a tour and you just you want to make sure that you know what you're looking at here before you start off. The other thing I like about Google Maps is if you click on something specific, like for example the Pantheon, you're going to often get back Google reviews. So this is kind of a nice feature because you can see the Google reviews right here and you click on this reviews button here and then you can see what people are complaining about or what they liked. And I can understand it, right? I mean, even though it's a 2000 year old building, if the Pantheon, you know, if you had a bad experience there and if they charge you a bunch of money, then sometimes, you know, people will complain about it. There's also directions, which is really nice. So I'll show you that really quickly. So let's get from the Colosseum to the Pantheon. So what I've done is I've typed in the Pantheon and I'm going to click directions and I'm going to pick my starting point. I'm going to pick the Colosseum. So the Colosseum to the Pantheon, if I wanted to walk it, it's a 25 minute walk and it's going to show me right there how I can get there. Surprising app number 10 is Google Translate. And I've wound up using this quite a bit over the last few years when I've traveled overseas. You can detect the language on the left. You can have the translation on the right. I've just typed in Google Translate at the top. So the website itself is just sort of embedded in the search. So you just search for Google Translate. And then I'm going to type in here on the left, hello. And then I can translate it now into any language I want. You can see it's written down there. I think that's a really cool feature because if you're traveling overseas, you want to make sure that you're able to either show them the phone or speak it out loud. And that can sometimes be very helpful. Here's another one that I've had to use in the past. This is very helpful because you can show them a picture if you can't speak the language and that can get you where you need to go. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. I love using Google. Google is free. There's a lot of free stuff on there and it's pretty high quality. Uh, it's one of the biggest websites in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here's another video on how you can have some fun doing free stuff online. Thanks a lot for watching.